Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wit Finish Wednesday. Sorry we were late. Freddie and Freddie and Nan, I believe, saw some comments there. Um, sorry we're late getting on. Katie had an important phone call from her sister. But we have got a busy night tonight. We're going to be tying up this fly. Uh, I've yet to to, um, to look in the box. It is the fluttering stone. Should be a relatively easy fly for us to tie. Um, but who knows? It's always fun tying it kind of blind. Um, speaking of tying blind flies, uh, our good boy, hey, Ken B, good day. And Chris, what's up? And hey, Jeff, wherever Jeff is, if Jeff commented, I missed his comment. Um, speaking of tying blind, I was really hoping to have some time to uh, pre-tie these flies. But uh, with our upcoming trip to fish with Gary Barnes and Craig Matthews, Gary sent us a handful of flies that are right here, right here. And uh, we picked a couple of them that I was going to tie and have everything all laid out and show you how to tie them. But instead, I, I kind of halfway laid stuff out, and that's about all I've gotten done. <laughs> we had a little impromptu baseball practice this evening. And between that and work and uh, life in general, this will be the first time we're going to be tying all three of these flies. These come straight out of Gary's MSU box. So thank you for sharing your MSU flies. We're really excited and, and probably in future shows, especially when we bring these out west and we catch some fish on these, uh, we'll be tying some more of these later on. And since I'm saying later on, we'll go live on the Instagram. What's up, Nan? Don. Awesome seeing you on here. That was an awesome uh, um, pheasant tail that you posted uh, yesterday, I believe. So speaking of Don's pheasant tail that he posted, Katie has some pictures uh, queued up, ready to show. So, uh, and Nan's got some of Gary Barnes flies too. They are awesome. So Katie, do you want to show off your photographs that you've got? Or not your photographs, but... Yes, I would love to show my photographs that I have collected. Um, let's do that. <laughs> okay, so first we have Ken B. Um, emailed us his weekly email photo of the pheasant tails, his version here. Hey, Langley. Thank you, Ken B. And we have Grey Ghost Fly Tying. These are from last week, the pheasant tail. The uh, um, Mercury flashback. Mercury flashback. Thank you. Um, D Bishop 32. Very nice. There's Don. Um, and then we have. B he went small on these. Teeny tiny. He did. And AK Sled Neck 1. Those just glisten. They glisten. Nice. So thank you guys for sending those in. For sharing those on Instagram, always love to see your stuff. And speaking of that Mercury flashback pheasant tail, those of you all that are watching last week as I was looking for Pat Dorsey's book, and I, I pulled out the Fishing and Tying Tailwater Flies book because I couldn't find this most recent one, one of you all had to notice, and as I was looking for materials a few minutes ago to tie Gary's flies, I found it. And one of you all noticed that it was sitting right behind me the whole time. So... Next time you see something, you can pretend like you're Katie and say, dude, it's right in front of you. You don't have to like wait forever. Um, what's up, Mama Angler? Good to see you. Yeah, Ken, he was whipping up those size 26s. So that was pretty wild. All right. So we're going, going to go ahead and get started on the uh, Smitty's Fly Box fly. We'll knock this one out. Then we'll move over to Gary's Flies. And for those of you all, the, the four of you that are on Instagram, uh, if you can, come over and, and hop on YouTube and you'll be able to see us just a touch better. So the Smitty's Fly Box, there is a discount. Uh, I think it's uh, DeMuth, I think. I don't know. Um, you can send us a note on Instagram or email or, or send um, Smitty's Fly Box a note directly. If you're interested in ordering these, I think you get 10% off, five bucks off, something like that for your first box. But um, we're going to open this up. The cool thing is, is these come with instructions here. Oh, and for those of y'all that are waiting on the big giveaway to give away the fly box, Katie's going to do that here in just a little bit. Um, so you've got a little article here and you have step-by-step -step instructions on how to tie. This is the intermediate box. 
So the fluttering stone, this is what we want to tie. And then you have the beginner's box here. So it, it comes with everything you possibly need to tie the fly. Um, so I'm going to set this out here. The cool thing is, is I've got all my junk sitting out, but I don't need any of it except for just some regular stuff. Here's a cool sticker. It's like a wooden trout or wooden trout. What's up, Truman? Uh, we've got some of this that might be packing material. It might be used. I think it's, I don't know. I think that's supposed to be used, actually. So we've got some um, pre-cut bodies here, foam bodies. Got some dubbing, some dubbing, some legs, and some pink fly all on, some thread, some hooks, and some... Um, Bonnie braid. I can't think of what the fancy word Chris can tell us. You've been tying some of um, uh, Charlie Craven's patterns, not Bonnie braid, Bonnie cord. Come on, Chris, what is it? Uh, so we'll, we'll tie this one up real quick. Hopefully this one doesn't take too long since I got a late start because I want to get to Gary's flies too. All right. So we've got some size 12 Daiichi 2220s. We'll put this in the box. That's one thing that I need to have when we go out there are some good uh, high floating stone flies. So this looks like a relatively easy one to tie. And um, so it's going to float well, hold the dropper up, and that's good. And if you're in the Chris Harris camp, you need to tie some size um, fours and sixes. All right, we'll throw this this guy in the hook in the hook in the vise here, and I've got some purple. It came with black thread. I'm going to use some purple Semperfly six aught. And the reason I'm going to use six aught is because we are tying foam down, and I want to see, and I want to use um. I, I don't want the thread to be so thin it cuts through the uh, the foam. So here we go. So I'm going to start the. Thread the right behind the eye of the hook, bring it back. Feel free to ask any questions as I go. And it says to put a start your thread along the hook and add a dummy link just above the hook point. Stop your thread immediately in front of the hook point. Okay, so basically need to do a ball of thread right here. So I'm just gonna put a nice layer of thread Almost going down the hook shank just a touch, just so we can um, give that dubbing thing something to stick to. One thing when I'm tying, um, when I'm tying, I prefer not to use glue unless I absolutely have to. And that's just kind of my personal preference. I feel like if you learn to tie without glue, you'll tie better. There's some flies you got to use glue on, and that's just the way it is. But if you rely on glue, the reality is, Eventually, the glue is going to come undone, and um, if it's a poorly tied fly, then it will um, it's going to come undone, undone even quicker. And if you can get a lot of these tied just fine without glue, then you're that much better. But like I said, there are some that you do need glue on. So that's our little little ball there. Evening, Randy. Evening. Our Alaskan buddy. You missed your flies being shown off just a second ago. All right. Step two. Tie down the first section of the hook point. Add dubbing along the hook until you reach the foam segment. Okay. So I'm going to grab a purple piece. And you can see these things. Um, see how they, those are cut? I don't know if the, I don't know that dye that he's using. It's not one of the ones like I, nor like I would normally use. But it's a cool little thing, and I think you can actually use the ridges kind of as where you're supposed to time down. So just make sure. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Let's go like that. So I need to put a little bit more dubbing on. Have to go a little, little further, further up. Did you see him? I don't know if you if you saw him. I mean, not that you need to see your fly again, but were you watching when uh, when Katie showed him, Randy? How's life in Alaska these days? Just put just a little bit more dubbing because since these are pre cut, I'm, I'm really kind of limited and I'm going to make sure I've got enough room towards the front of the fly so I don't run out of foam. Let's get the 
that just right there. It said go to the hook point. I should have just done what it said. All right. So how's that going to look? Much better. So I'm going to put a couple wraps here. Start slowly pulling tight, letting it kind of roll itself on the top of the hook shank. And on flies like this, I like to go ahead and put a wrap or two dubbing. Yeah, a wrap or two dubbing in the in the seam here. Not necessarily for durability or anything. I just think it looks good. It's finally turning summer. So is it like 40 up there? I don't know where in Alaska you live, and but what what is summer for you guys? We're looking forward to finding out, aren't we, Katie? We are looking forward to finding out for sure. Next summer. All right, so let's get a nice little right there, and I will pull up. And I'm going to do kind of a thinner. Noodle, get it roughly where I want it. It's got a little bit further forward, and then we'll bulk up that noodle. I'll give a umqua fly box away to the first person who can tell me what the name of this fly is that John is tying right now. Oh, comment it. What's the name of this fly? So you get asking people who's paying attention right now. Let's see who's paying attention in class today. What are you tying right now? If, if you'll hop over on YouTube, I can't read the comment who it was on Instagram, but we're tying the a fluttering stone that is from, um, I don't have the box right now, but it's a Smitty's Fly Box Fly of the Month right now. So it's a fluttering stone. Well, what you can't the win the fly box. Oh, Doug Gummin, I just said the answer, didn't I? You said the answer. Right there. Someone on Instagram asked yeah. earlier. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, well, I'll, I'll do another trivia here in a minute. <laughs> John messed that one up. But good work for those of you who are um, chiming in there with your answers, and they were correct. Well, purple floater, close enough. I like it. All right. So let's see. Go a little bit further forward. I'm going to bring this back. Under there, good. I want to look at my underbody. So I'm looking like right there to make sure that it's nice. Let's get my pointer out. See how, make sure that it's going to be even going across. And roughly that looks good. Maybe one more there. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Okay. Step three, cut a strip of wing material. I've got to go ahead and lash this down. So make it go right in the middle there. Shows on top, pull it back, put a couple wraps here just to lock everything in. So see, we've got a nice little start to a fly. And, okay, so cut a strip of wing material and a long rectangle. A long rectangle, that's kind of something. So that is what this is used for, the, the packing stuff. So let's see, I want it to be roughly that. We'll see if we do this right. Hold my breath right and my tongue out at the correct angle. I'm going for, it's probably a little bit too thick. Let's check the side and make sure I didn't, yep. So I'm going for just a little bit thicker than the um, hook gap. We'll take a little bit of this off. All right. Let's go into long width. The width can be as wide as the top of the body of foam. Okay. Well, let's just, that looks right. Tied in and shown in the middle of the segment. So we'll go like this. So let the tiny legs in. A couple wraps here. So we've got that, that part tied in. Tying rubber legs on each side. Okay, so I'm tying them here. Okay, okay, I got you now. So pull these out. So I'm like I'm in Fairbanks. Jeff, it's called it's Purple favorite. Rain. Oh, look at that rain cloud emoji. I haven't seen those before. Oh, that is cool. Sorry I'm ruined your giveaway, honey. But thanks for keeping everyone on their toes. Have you got your names laid out yet for... The other drawing, or are you working on those? Okay, so to tie these, tie this on, I'm going to get 
it's just one um uh probably half a length of the silly leg material is what it looks like and um i'm gonna set it right on top if you'll go back to the hook it'd be grand set it right see i've got the my legs here just one set it on top put a couple loose wraps here and then we'll There we go, pull them around. So about like that. Now we'll pull our scissors out, cut them, put these scissors back. And now I can adjust them just the way I want them. So you can see now I've got this nice little nice little X there. Nice. I rebel say side, you now I'll dive into your thread and make sure you wrap the diving on each side, okay? Cool. And go back to, now we're going to the front. Got it. It's a little bit easier when I just make it up as I go. I think we will be flying into Anchorage, I believe. I guess where everyone flies into pretty much from, from the lower 48. All right. So let's push this diving up a little bit more. So we can use this diving to kind of sp split these the legs back a little bit. Pull this up. The bags are kind of small. They're, I mean, it's the right size size for the um, for the amount of diving. It's just sticking your fingers in can be. I guess if I had a really neat organized desk, I could pull out all the dubbing and just lay it out. But as they say, not today, Grace. Not today, Grace. John's triple tasking tonight, tying, reading, instruction, recall, well, maybe not the last one. <laughs> and reading comments. Thanks. Let's go to that one. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to bring this back over to make sure my body's still the same, same goodness underneath. See, that looks pretty good, pretty straight, pretty even. I'll bring this down. Now we've got our last little segment tied in. So we're good so far. And just to keep it from spinning, I want to put a couple little wraps right behind that hook eye. Okay, so now we got that done, that done. Pull this forward, got it. And then pull it back. Okay, so we're going to pull this, this piece forward. We're going to bring this down like that. Make sure it's kind of centered, kind of. So you can see we've got that kind of bubbled up. A little wrap, and now we're going to yep pull this leg forward, kind of capture it, capture that one, do another wrap so it's going to fall out. Make sure it's still kind of even, pull tight. Okay, looking fine so far. How's it saying to do that? So Tying legs again at the wing. Wing, front side, cross your thread back over to the middle section. Okay, so we want to take our thread, pull up, down, cross. So you can see we got a little cross across the front there. Beginning of one anyway. Got it. Fold the wing back and tie it down. Okie dokie. You can pin or bod can use a poke to, and we'll try that. So we'll tie this down here. So we just kind of doubled up our, doubled up the wing. And I'm gonna kind of angle these a little bit out so they're not right on top of each other. Got it. I got a touch of gray yarn and then pink yarn trimmed your desired length. So the yarn, this will be probably something that, let's go to the side view. 
that should have done earlier. But like I said, I hadn't done much. So I'm going to pull out one chunk from the Bonnie braid. Chris, did you say what kind it was? I don't remember. I'm calling it bon macrame yarn. There you go. I think we look on Amazon. It's called Bonnie braid. I think. So I got a little piece here. I'm going to leave it kind of, kind of together like that. And so I just want one. Or do I double it over? I think just one will be fine. Because this is this doesn't fold or the instructions, you don't fold it over. So we'll put a couple wraps there, pull it tight. Tight. Give this a trim. Yes, Nan, I am. Definitely. There we go. Yep. The mini. Okay. And now we're going to get the, the pink. The pink stuff. Had family assignments to Fort Wainwright. Got to visit the Grand. Is Fort Wainwright That's in, nice. in Alaska? Is that Alaska? I'm assuming. So we're going to go, this one is shorter, so I'll probably go and tie this one into length. And this is going to be mainly for visibility. Because, you know, the bright purple is not quite bright enough. Okay. It's in Fairbanks. Oh, Okay. My stepbrother was stationed in as an Air Force base in Alaska. I don't know if that was Fort Wainwright or not. Could have been. Let's go and cut this to length about like that. There. And I'm going to get some... Oh, get a little... I'd say I probably could have put a little more over, a little more of this, that wing on there, but it's okay. This will kind of round the corners just a bit. Right there. Oh, that's now we got our cool little rounded cool. thing. Yeah, like the little wings on there. Like that's All right, that looks wingy. And whip finish. Okay, I probably will put a little bit of. We'll put quite a bit. Of, I won't say quite a bit. I'll put some Sally Hansen's right here. Let that soak in. Then I'll whip finish over that and maybe put a little bit more. Now it's going to take me five minutes to get the pen back in the glue bottle. I'm telling you, um, we like to talk about fancy stuff. These little resin or bottles here for glue. Uh, Tim Flagler told us about these. And I'm, I'm like, how often do you got to replace your glue in this or throw them away? Because they're only like three bucks or so. Um, and he said he never does. I'm like, how about thin I mean, it? They're how about, very how about, how about much... thin it out, and he doesn't. You don't thin it out or anything. It just stays. This is this stays fresher longer in here than the regular bottles. They're very airtight compared to just like whatever it comes in. Yep. All right. So one thing you can tell when you pull down hard on your fly like this, if it doesn't spin, that means that it's it's secured to the hook pretty well. So put a wet finish here. And the final step that I'm probably going to leave out just for time's sake is going to be grab your bodkin, stick through the middle here, make a hole like that, make a hole, and then uh, get a bobbin threader, stick it in there, and pull one more leg in the middle. And like I said, we're probably going to, we'll just skip that one. I'm going to pull this forward, cut all these legs, see how it looks. See the back ones are still a little bit long because they're separated. Well, that doesn't look too shabby. No, it's a little for, cool guy. For a quick, quick little one. That's the Air Force Base. No, Eric's, that's it. Erickson, that's where he was stationed. One, two. See, so, yeah, whoever said I'm not reading the comments very good tonight is correct. My bad. But, <clears throat> I, shoot, man. We'll have to do something with my cup here because I just dropped it. 
and uh, right before we went live, I dropped it and lost a bunch of flies, but I've been busy tying caddises. Let's go to the side here. Um, busy tying caddises this weekend. I just haven't tied much in the past couple of days. So, so I don't see them falling off. So I'm going to lose them all. Do you want me to um, announce it's a two. winner to pick a fly box? Sure. Sure. Yes, ma'am. I wasn't sure that you could hear me. I am going to let our winner, the winner tonight is going to be Randy. Want, hold on, honey. You want to switch it over so it's showing you? Yeah. Randy. Pick a fly box. So Randy, our Alaska buddy for posting last week while you're uh, on here, since you posted your whip finish Wednesday last week, she picked, she drew your name and you pick one of the two fly boxes there. And we'll get it in the mail to you tomorrow. So you can see we've got the LT Magneto, which is good for it's just a it's just six different magnetic compartments. Um and and then the weekender high. The weekender and the weekender is one that I use all the all time. The that, that's probably my time. favorite. That's a silicone this one. This is the weekender. This is the magnetic. That's a good one. So pick your pleasure. While you're doing that, I won't be loading let, up. Let let us know. Do you want to see a leech first or a little micro bugger of the two flies of Gary's? Leak first or the weekender sounds great. Okay, so Randy's going to get the weekender. Great. Good job, Randy. Leech or bugger? Both are small. Jeff. Are they, Jeff, we're both. both. Which one first? They're both minimal materials. And we're both going to really wing that. We're, it's, I uh, don't know. We'll go leech. Okay. Got the leech ready here. We got the hook there. So we got a size 12 A-Rex Freshwater 555. The bugger stone. Well, I guess you call it a bugger stone. Call it whatever you want to. I'm going to put a 4 millimeter on this size 12 copper bead. I don't use copper beads that much. And uh, like I said, this is an MSU uh, fly from... Gary Barnes. So since Gary's on here, I don't know if he, there you go. Yeah. An MSU style fly. Um, I'm, I'm calling it MSU style because they're both, they're, they're, they're both uh, MSU. So we'll just call it a style. I'm we'll going to use, a, we'll just call it a style fly. Yes. I'm going to use the <laughs> ADOT rusty uh, classic wax thread or rust classic wax thread. Make sure I've got that on there. Right with the rounded end up. He doesn't look the best. I picked these out, by the way, before John even picked those ones out. Those are the ones that I picked out. Mm -hmm. She did. I did. Very safely reversed. That's right. Son of a leech. I was like, this those look good. Be pretty simple. But Gary, you can talk about the the history of this pattern and all this jazz. Well, I've I've got my thread started, and I'm going to go under Thank here. And yes. pull out the micro stripped hide crawfish orange. Yes, ma'am. Are you saying something? I'm sorry. Um, Swamp Fox says, I think he likes you. I think he's talking about Misha. Oh, well, probably. That's a good chance. And yes, she does like me a lot. Are you, are you getting French kissed over there? Yeah. The best friend. Mm hmm. There's a piece of left over that could have worked. Oh well. That's one thing with the um the hairline uh zonked pine squirrel. I gotta say, I, I like the wopsy stuff a little bit better. And the biggest if you'll put it over to the um the hook, I'll show you. That's true material out there. Love fishy up. Okay, so see how, how that is and then how it kind of gets skinnier and how the it's not really showing on the, the thing right now, but the the cuts aren't super duper straight. And that's kind of consistent. Like this piece right here, how thick that is and how that's kind of see that's kind of rolled up. Unfortunately, I'm gonna cut that off. So um like that'll I could use that for Dubbing loops or whatever would be fine, but not for not for this. I want it to be a nice, consistent thickness. 
and uh <clears throat> yeah straight and you see how it's just not absolutely perfect Let's see ken all right so let's see one thing that's interesting on this is he didn't tie down the um yeah he didn't tie down the the square right there so it's just kind of sitting there but the only materials that I see, I could be wrong, are the pine squirrel, some um, straggle legs or straggle string, CDC, and that's it. So really simple. What's the what's the body kind of the little the the thorax sort of looking? The part? stuff here, the yeah. shiny stuff, straggle legs. Okay, straggle legs. Gotcha. Yep. So I got that in here. I'm going to let's see which way I want to do it because I don't want to do it upside down. So I want to ride like this, like this. So. I don't want time to do it backwards. I know it. I'm going to measure. Yes. Remember the upside down, front side up. Get all that oriented before you start tying stuff on. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I know. Nope. It's going to go this way. I've had to retake many a pick. Hello. Okay. So we've got our hide stabbed. We'll put it back in the back in the vise. That's a really f crappy way to put it in the vise, isn't it? Grief. It's a good way to damage your jaws. All right, so I'll pull this back. Make sure I've got enough coming up front. So we're we're good. Don't we'll leave that tail super long. It always turn out great. The flies and yep, yep. You got it, <laughs> Gary. Were you saying no backwards, backwards? Um. All right, well, I'm going to try to keep this as original as possible. Gary, should I use fluorescent orange or should I use fluorescent orange sunburst? Both would be good. This is a little little more dirty. Both of them are super bright. Um, the fluorescent orange sunburst, the fluorescent orange, or, or mama angle, anyone. Mm. Fluorescent mm. orange or fluorescent orange sunburst. Do, do, do. I, I'm going to go with orange. Well, that's what that's exactly what Gary said. He well. said orange. Well, I see that, yes. So that doesn't narrow it down. I mean, just the Mine regular. Said the same thing. The orange, the, the orange, orange one. The one that's not fluorescent, not sunburst, just regular orange. Jason says use both. <laughs> Jason, what's up, man? I love it. Yes. Hello, again. Right. Can I help you? So I'm going to kind of wet my fingers and pull this kind of out of the way. The dog is going bananas right now. Okay, let's go and do a bit of a thread base. And this is the A dot. Both. So a little pinch wrap. I'm going to tie it in at the front just so I can keep my body somewhat um, consistent. I have a good down the hook shank just a little bit. Right now, Gary's like, yep, he has not tied this one yet. Beads backwards, so we'll pull it back, get it right. Okay. Well, we've tied similar. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, they're all the same. It's got a hook and a bead. Well, same basic thing. I'm just saying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna got one wrap, pulled it tight, and I'm gonna do touching wraps, touching. If you want to, you take your time with it. Super big, like a whole. Even lot. a pink, even a pink straggle string would have looked kind of cool in there. Well, you had your chance. Well, I know, but that wasn't an, given to me as an option. Okay. Now, if we wanted, we could do. We could have put dubby on here first. We could have done anything we. Our little heart wanted. I'm not going to take it all the way up to the front because I want to leave room for my collar and tying everything down. Misha? The dog's going upstairs to get in our bed. Okay, mm -hmm. like, mm -mm, no, you don't. All right. <clears throat> so now we got our nice little thin body. And I think it's like he. Gary might have used red or something or different. It's like a dirtier orange. Black and blue, black and clear red. All is 
and they orange. Cool. So I'm going to pull this forward, except right side up. Figure out how much I need of this. And Gary, we will learn. He says he ties them in black and blue, black and purple, black and claret, olives, and orange. Henry heard the squeaky. Henry heard the squeaky. I really think that Henry and Misha need to play okay. together. Yes, I do too. They're the same sort of. I cannot find what I'm looking like, for. Um, maturity, I believe, like as far as like their. Which means they're not very. Insistence <laughs> on playing with their squeaky toys. All right. So we've got that <clears throat> tied in. We'll pull everything back here. And now I'm going to kind of work on taking this out a little bit. Just a little bit. And for those of you who know, these random scissors are those you've seen these times. I have yet to replace these. It's the same pair. Chris probably remembers when I got these. Was it two years ago? Something like that. Make sure that's not going anywhere. Okay. So we've got a nice little fun body there. Two years. What well, was two years, Chris? Misha just turned two. Are y'all like, dude, we've been talking about that for five minutes. Seriously, pay attention. All right, so now I've got a... And when I didn't have my glasses on last night, I thought this collar was just a bit of the bit more of the squirrel, but I believe it is CDC. So I've got some rusty brown CDC that should match nicely. And this is one of those things you can definitely overdo. So I've got my feather here. The this one's not bad, but a lot of times the fibers coming off right at the butt, the stem can be really thick and, and probably absorb more water. So I usually pop those off. And we'll put them in a clip here. If I can find my on my clip and I cannot find my, but it's still packed up in my tying bag. So I've got a pedicine clip here that'll work. I believe Misha's like panting. She's out of breath. Is there a name for this fly? Uh, like Gary said MSU, but that's also going to be the name of the next fly. Uh, so I don't know. You, Gary, the guy who I'm, I'm, I copied Gary's fly. <laughs> Hundred um, percent. I don't know. He's on here, so if he wants to make up a name for it, the straggle bugger. No, that one's been taken. The straggle leech. I'd say that's taken. The the straggle is real. How about that? Call it the straggle is real. Because when you're was close to a slump buster, yep, it does. And unfortunately, everything kind of looks close to the next thing. These days, there's always something that someone's close to. So I just I've got one side of the feather. It's not wasn't a long feather, wasn't a short feather, it's a normal size feather. One side of it, put it in a clip, split my thread, and now I'm going to twist this up. He doesn't name his flies. So much the mini meat jig. How about like the Stragglemeister from SNL? The Stragglemeister. Remember that skit? I do not. Where like everybody was the such and such meister. Damn. Oh yeah. The John Meister. No, not that one. The Gary Meister. Yeah. I can't be the only one who remembers that. Okay. So now we've got that little bit of a little bit of a color. I'd probably like it just a little bit thicker, but you know, we, if we got time, we'll tie off the tie one of these one more time if we have time. So you can see how Gary's is a little bit thicker. The 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 CDC's thicker here. So possibly even just you know what I could do? That'd be super quick. Let's do this. Let's me be fancy about this. Pull this down and put a quick little little whip in here. Thanks, maybe. Chris. <laughs> I am a child of the eighties for sure. Well, I didn't have cable until I got in. Really, in no, no it, was, it was high Here school. Excuse me. Um, so no, I did not watch SNL when I was in the middle school or high school. Okay, 
So I just took my thread off and reattached it. So we're going to do that a different way so it will be thicker. Got to find my CDC then. There's one person on Instagram. That is like a record. That's awesome. Well, I really felt old the other day when I was trying to talk to the girls about something and I was talking about Karnak and the Magnificent and they had no clue who I was talking about. You're crazy. Well, you, if you didn't have cable, then you probably don't know who Karnak. I don't know who Karnak the Magnificent is. That's why I said you're crazy, girl. So I'm going to, I just Karnak? tied the, the whole feather in, that bit in the stem back. I'm going to leave, I don't even know if you can see it. I'm leaving the stem there. I'm going to get some of our favorite hack of pliers out. I'm going to get roasted because I bet everyone on here knows who Karnak the Magnificent is. That was Johnny Carson. On late night. That was one of the shows that I used to sometimes get lucky enough to watch with my parents. And he was, uh, he'd had this big, huge, like fortune teller hat on with a feather and he would predict, he'd like make predictions. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I think I've seen clips of that. Yeah. All right. So we got the. Yes. And Ed McMahon. Pull this back. They were funny, Freddie. They made me laugh. See, they don't make TV like that anymore. We watched what movie did we watch the other day that had all an awesome soundtrack? I thought the Nike movie we watched. That's had it. A that was it. The Nike movie. The yeah, those were eighty that songs. Was awesome. Yeah, we uh, air. If y'all get a chance to watch Air, that, I thought that was a great movie. It was so, a good, feel good, fun movie, and it was good. Yes, I loved the Carol Burnett show. It was so funny. I, I did a lot of watching television with my parents, so I saw a lot of stuff like that. Okay. So let's see how long Gary does his tail. Um, yes, I got teary-eyed at the end of air when they played the Be Like Mike song. So it's, it's pretty much just as long as the hook shank. If I would have pre-cut it, it was a little long as the hook shank, so I'll just cut it like that. And then I like to... As opposed to having the have it squared off like that, I rarely get it right. But we'll try to. But you got the right scissors for it. Yes, ma'am. I don't know if I finished my sentence, but these are the. I have not changed these out at all. The scissors have stayed. I mean, they're not the absolute sharpest in the world now, but I mean, I'm cutting nano silk, cutting leather, cutting. They, when when I got them, they're like. Don't use them as babysit. Like, don't baby them. Use them and see how long they last. Like, well, man of silk is hard on scissors. Right, like, that's okay. If they don't last, we need to know. I said, okay. So there we go. So we got a little little thing there. So it's gonna ride like this. Let's see how we look. Can't even flip it over to the side view sure. forever. So here's a Gary version. Here's a version we'd say. I think our, our orange is definitely, he must have like a, mine is crawfish orange. This looks more like a rusty orange or burnt orange or something. Let's say that it's probably Wopsy. It looks like a Wopsy hide versus the hairline. In fact, you're, everyone's watching like, dude, if we get your fingers out of the way. So here's our two little, little leeches. I'd say it should work fine. Should work good. Cool. All right, so we'll switch over. The last one we're going to tie is this little woolly micro bugger here. Like I really like that. And we're going to play with the tail because when I asked Gary yesterday, I was like, what what kind of tail do you, should we use? What, what do you think? He gave me like seven or eight things to use. And I was like, well. Quit. Quit. Okay. This is her toy that she brought in right here. I don't even know where she got this. What is my socks? Are they your socks or my socks? They're clean. You can show the TV. The TV. This is what she brought in. Nisha, these are not a toy. If you hopped over on Instagram, we'd love to see you hop over on YouTube because that's where we're live. And we can see comments and you can see us with four different cameras and different microphones and you'll be able to see the fly a lot better. And you know what? Someone should have told me earlier to zoom in. That might be better. 
So, okay, this is a size 14. And Gary, I'm going to tie this on a jig hook because on the, I can use this with Euro. I can have my bottom fly with anything. I can have a middle fly with the standard traditional hook, which is, this one's tied on here. Um, I don't want to say I limit myself, but um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my thought process anyway. So I've got, let me make sure I put it in right. Yes, I've got a dot. Black, classic wax thread. Thought sure you'd have those $1 tube socks from beside the right. Yep, if I wanted to make hatchling bass, would it be a leech or micro bugger ish? Leech or micro bugger? I would say the bugger. Because this is very, I mean, the reason I'm, I don't say confident, but the reason I'm okay, just go ahead and tie this without tying it before is this is going to be very similar to your favorite fly, the leggy Kate McLaren, only it doesn't have the front hackle, the legs, the this, the that, the any of it. It's super easy. Um, if I had to choose one, but I think Gary's right. Both. That's a trick question. Okay, so I've got some... Um, the separate fly I stub in yellow, it is super duper duper bright. And the main reason I'm using this for the tail, I want you to watch. One, it's not going to float. So gonna, it'll absorb the water quick. Pull out. See how long these fibers are and straight these fibers are? That's exactly what I want for this tail. If it was a normal ice stub, it was a little crinkly and everything, it'd be hard to uh, be hard to do as a, use as a tail. So I want to kind of get the midpoint somewhat. I'm going to grab it here. Pull this up front. Pull everything back. Make it messy. It's okay. The police aren't going to mind. Not today, anyway. So now we've got this super bright. I mean, the, you got so much light on it, it's kind of hard to see, but super duper duper bright tag. You could also use the yellow number seven, the floor bright, if you didn't have this, just some sort of bright, um, some sort of bright tag there. And we'll go ahead and cut this off pretty long. Let's see how long he's doing his. So, yeah, about, we'll say about like that. So, I mean, seriously, it's bright. Okay, so now I need to tie a piece of water. Gary, should I use red or anyone pop, hop in? Should I use red or black? Semperfly, 0.2 millimeter wire. Red, black, red, black. You're going to be like, well, it depends on what color the dubbing is. And the dubbing is going to be come out of this fly box here. And it's a mix. We'll just say it's a mix of claret and black. So we'll use red just to keep it kind of. Oh, Brady, 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 thank you. All right, I'm going to shove it right here in the, the hook eye or in the, the slot. And it came down. That's okay. Now it's tied off. I want to cord up my thread. Okay, so now I've got our wire tied in nice. I've got it tied on the opposite side. So when I come around and do my first wrap, it'll come under the tail versus on top of the tail and move it around. If I'm much more than stock trout, okay. So I'm going to take my dubbing. I'll twist it on small little pieces. I'm not trying to keep this super duper duper thin. Not too big a deal. Don't need much of a taper, but if you do have a taper, it could taper towards the front. But hey, if you had to save it tapered in the back, it probably like wouldn't be the end of the world. All right. Let's see if that's enough. And I couldn't tell what really what color the dubbing was, Gary. So this is not the right color, but I think it'll be okay. Just don't tell anyone. All right. So now I'm going to 
touching wraps, keeping this even. A little bit of an empty spot there. Let's do this. Take off some of that. How's that looking? Looking okay? Looks good. All sorts of colors. No wrong way. I bet if I pull this around, so you can really see the, the one piece is really long, but you kind of see that color showing through on the uh, the dubbing a little bit better. That's nice. So let's switch over to one of the other cameras because I've got a couple different options here. I don't tie live with Hackle very much anymore. And it was fun to get this one out. This is a, a black with a little bit of speckling. And Nan has this, this one. She looked high and low for one just like this. And uh, I just wanted to see if this, if I had the right size on this one. Let's see. That might be a little bit big. Just double check. So what I do when I'm when I'm trying to size my hackle, regardless of the um, what I'm doing, is I take my feather and I hold it up, pull it, and see. Okay, that's too big. So now I'm going to take my hackle gauge and look down and see. Okay, that is a. It's almost a size 10 on that one. So that is way too big. So I need more like a 14 because this is a size 14, but at least a 12. And see, that's a big 14. When you're trying to find another size for your hackle, just go somewhere completely different on the um, on the saddle. I bet this one will be fine. So my plan B, yeah, it looks good. It's a lot better. My plan B, and Nan, don't get too excited, but I've just got this this one. Here's a, a heritage cape. Um, and if you want to switch over to the close up, it's um there you go. It's got a little bit of um it's actually a speckled badger, but it's got more black in it than speckling. It's more like speckled black. It's pretty pretty interesting. Probably look better if I took it out of the box or out of the bag. Got it from my feather guy. I know. Okay, so, so now that's the same feather I want to use for this one. So I'm just cutting the bottom part off. I'm going to strip just a little bit, just the stem. See, I got that little bit left. Let's cut this just a little bit, make sure we don't have, am I saying a little bit a lot right now, or is it just me? Cord up my thread so it bites. Hold this straight up and down to one wrap. In front, unwrap behind. I can pull, it locks everything in. Now I can make sure it's all good and locked in. So that's that feather's not going anywhere. If you want, you can be fancy and put your thread in the bobbin cradle. We're going to do one full wrap around and make sure the fibers come out. Now we're going to start bringing it back. Should not catch it too much on the hook point. So it about right there. Now we'll pull our <clears throat> wire. Capture that. Now we just go right back up with the, the wire. And that's kind of the, I won't say it's not magic, but that's the, the trick is just going quick. And pretend like there's nothing there. Three wraps behind it, three wraps in front of it. That is locked off. There, make sure there's no, not really many fibers that are going forward too much. And this, this is where, like, if you wanted to put soft tackle, you put legs, you want to put whatever you want to. If you wanted to um, put just a pinch more dubbing on here, I'll do that. But, um, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Dan. You can get, you're like, you don't. That, this one feather I'll be able to get. I mean, that one took a little bit of hackle. Probably another five, four flies on this one feather. Okay, so I just have a little bit. I don't want much, but a little bit of dubbing there. So yeah, just like that. 
Now we'll whip finish and this one's done. John will be camping in Montana. The guy has hundreds and hundreds of wine products. I know exactly what you're talking about, Gary, but most people might think that you're trying to brag. That you're not talking about yourself. Whip finisher would be good. There we go. I don't know if that dubbing the front was really necessary. But this is one that I'll be bringing. I'll go ahead and tie a few more. The tail might be a touch of the long side. But here is, here's my original that I had to go with. So we can side by side. So the original, maybe a little bit more, um, a little more dubbing or a little more, maybe one more turn of hackle, maybe. I don't know. It looks like a killer panfish killer. And probably would be good to take this hackle feather off. I don't even have my watch on honey. What's the time? It's five after. Five after. So we started, what, about 10 minutes late? Mm -hmm. I guess, unless you really want to see one of those other flies, we'd be happy to tie another one. But unless there's a big uproar of people saying, yes, tie another one, I'll... Um, Go through what we did tie and that is started off yeah that's gonna be fun i'm looking forward to going to jim's fly coat all i want is a winger cape and i've only got two wadding winger capes i just like winger capes and um so this should be that might I, i'd say it will at least be fished whether a fish will bite it up there this, this in a few weeks we'll come to find out but here's one that we tied Number two is here. Now, the, the, the first one was from Smitty's Fly Box. That was their Fly of the Month intermediate package. I tossed that under a popper for sure. Talk, which one, Don? The, 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 the floaty or the sinky? Here's the, um, the second we tied. This is our little, um, little crawdad leech. Our straggle leech, our MSU leech. Although the cool thing about the MSU leech is it doesn't like it, the pattern will change because it is an MSU leech or what it could be what you got leech. Here was Gary's original one. So this is what we kind of had to go with. Kind of liked how he tied the this in a little bit better, the squirrel. And finally, this bad boy. For some reason, I think my tail might be just. Literally a shade. Is it too long? No, it's the right length. It's just too like fan, too straight like that. And this is um so it's kind of the before and after here. Oh, there we go. Probably could have laid that down a little bit. And this one is the, the all Gary's have been shipped and handled by UPS a lot. And um so Anyway, well, Katie, I can't see the comments right this second. Maybe they'll come back. Um, but you gave away the the one fly box to, uh, so you did that drawing. Randy. So Randy got that one. Yes. Um, anything else you want to do? I don't think so. You don't think so? You're all good? Cool. Well, congratulations, Randy. I think we've sent you stuff before, but um, we, uh, we appreciate you submitting your fly. Uh, or your flies, remember, right? There's multiple ones that you posted, and um, and for everyone who commented, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we would love to uh, see your guys' MSU flies or your variation on the Spades fly box fluttering stone, which this one, as far as materials, you've seen some sort of winging material, foam, and some ice dub, like laying some legs. So Pretty pretty basic, um, pretty basic pattern, but sometimes it could be like a sheet of packing material that makes you not want to tie it because you can't find the packing material, can't find find this. Glad I didn't throw it out, but um, I hope you you believe those are all the first time that I've tied those, and uh, even though they're very similar to other flies, that was uh, that was kind of stressful because I was literally looking for this. Two, I was glad Katie got on the phone because I was looking for this two minutes before we were going live. And the uh, black nickel beads, I couldn't find them. These are the fly tire source. Um, 
you know, they're, they're very economical bees, like 12 bucks for a hundred. Um, and, um, so that, that was a lot of fun. Uh, Gary, you said when I talked to you earlier that you wanted to, you were kind of real low on caddises, I think. Um, the problem is if, I don't know how many there are here, but if that's the only thing that they're hitting, we won't have enough, but I'd say we'll have enough between the two of us to make do and, um, or excuse me, between the three of us to make do. And I'll probably bring a hook or two and some threads. So we'll be good. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's been a lot of fun. We really look forward to uh, seeing you every Wednesday night. Next Wednesday night, we are probably, probably going to tie a hollow perch pattern and maybe a stone nymph that is, um, I think it's called the water wick stone, I believe. Um, this is all, I wish I had a picture or something to show you. It's all from Snake River Flies. So um, one of the things that I really like is this crinkles on. And I want to find a pattern that uses a bunch of this. And the hollow perch is one that uh, some of Gary's friends said that we need to bring that pattern up. So we're really going to throw everything for a loop. And um, what's up, new flashback? Come over and hop over on YouTube. You'll be able to see us a ton better. Um, although we're getting off right now. Um, hey, Joel. Um, so we'll be tying some Snake River Flies next week. Uh, shoot them a note and say you're looking forward to it. Um, I'll turn it over to Katie. Let her say goodbye. Thanks, guys. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching tonight, everybody. Have a great weekend. Happy tying to everyone. See you guys. See you everyone on Instagram.